basically is to stop these drive-by shootings and kids shooting and killing kids. So the story that I want to start with and I want to introduce you to is Daquan Carey. He's a gang member. And I'll take you back into history, August the 28th, 2022. A group of gang associates and members were in Lake Wells and they got into an argument over a video game. And there was a shooting and in the middle of all of this running gun battle as it was, ultimately a victim, Tavelle Burgess, shot Cameron Silas and killed him in self-defense. So obviously he was not arrested. I have talked about subsequent to that shooting in Lake Wells, there being an event where they tried to shoot up a house just outside of Lake Wells. Well, let's fast forward. So there were five gang members that went after Burgess inside the public supermarkets on 6th Street in Winter Haven on November the 9th at about 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Well, guess what? When they went after Burgess, who was in there, to beat him up inside the Publix, Burgess armed himself with a knife that he bought. He first tried to hide from them in the Publix in the bathroom, and then he ran from them in the store and ultimately bought a knife. They jumped on him in the Publix, and he cut and stabbed and killed another gang associate. So this is the second person that he has killed in apparent self-defense. That case is still under investigation by the Winter Haven Police Department, and they're looking to possibly bring charges against some of the five associates for the death of the one gang associate. And Birches gets away again with his life. Well, here's the next picture of Burgess because he's not satisfied with that, so he finds out where, I'm sorry, this is Daquan Carey again because he's not satisfied because now Burgess has killed two of his friends, this, this Silas and this other victim, inside of the Publix, named Demetrius Alexis. So on November the 22nd of this year, just a few days ago, in Waverly, Florida, Daquan drives by Burgess residence, sees Burgess outside talking to his girlfriend, and does a drive-by shooting with the intent of killing Burgess in retaliation for Burgess's two people that he killed in self-defense as a result of gunfights. It's very complicated. But guess what? Daquan misses. And in this particular event, Daquan tries this drive-by shooting in unincorporated Polk County, and immediately we assign our detectives who are just the very best and our gang unit, and the search is on. Our gang unit does some remarkable investigative work, and so they get on to Daquan Carey. And they know he's armed. He always carries a gun. We know that he had this AK-47 handgun, and we want to give you a picture of what happens People look down this gun anytime Daquan's around because he's a very, very dangerous person. So there's a road called Mahogany Run over in the Cypress Gardens area. And our gang detectives, while on surveillance, see Daquan. And at that point in time, they go to arrest him. 
And the Quan does what the Quan does. He resists. And they had to fight him down. They got him handcuffed last night. And in his right front pocket was a 9 millimeter handgun. We're fortunate that he didn't try to pull that handgun on our deputies. Duquan's fortunate that he didn't pull that handgun on our deputies. If he had of, we would have shot him to pieces because we know he's very dangerous. We suspected he had a gun, but fortunately for us, but more fortunately for him, he didn't try to pull that gun on us, but he had it when we were fighting him down. He's locked up right now. Okay, here's what I want to tell the community. The Quan is locked up. He's not going any place. He's charged with attempted first degree murder. He's charged with a drive by shooting and shooting into an occupied vehicle. He shot into the girlfriend's car. As a result of the drive by, obviously, Burgess wasn't hit. But now come forward and help the Winter Haven Police Department identify and deal with these five or other four folks that are remaining from this attack inside of Publix during the middle of the afternoon when people are trying to shop. The police department needs your help. We're a little short of what I call good witnesses for that particular investigation. I've said this before. Gangbangers such as this guy doesn't care. He doesn't care and his associates didn't care. That's why they were going to jump on our victim Burgess in the middle of a Publix in the middle of the afternoon and of course he defended himself once again. But these are dangerous folks. He can't hurt you. He's locked up, but we need to get the others off of the street, too. Let me underscore, make something abundantly clear. This is a very, very, very few number of people, but they create a total panic in the community because all the community members know how dangerous they are, and they don't care. They will hurt you. We have to get the associates of Daquan off the street. That's important. But here's something we first talked about last week. Let me remind you again. Jerron Dunn's 33 years of age. He's a substitute English teacher at New Beginnings Charter School in Lakeland. We did an investigation and determined that he had engaged in appropriate misbehavior with two female victims, 17 and 18. One of them told the guidance counselor who reported it to us, and he was arrested. He was charged appropriately. And because he sent video clips showing that he was masturbating to the in the presence of these children. Sent these such these video clips, he's thirty three, to these seventeen and eighteen year olds who were students. So he was appropriately arrested. We sent out a press release and said, Hey, look, we need help. We know this is probably not the only two victims. Well, you don't have to call us a prophet, but we got two more people that came forward, and he was rearrested for having sex with a 20 year old who was his student. That's against the law. He was also arrested when an 18 year old came forward. And that inappropriateness of showing videos occurred in the classroom. 
So he was arrested and he bonded out on the first two. He was rearrested and he just bonded out again. So he's not in jail, but he doesn't learn well. If there are other victims, tell us. We want to know. Two more victims have already come forward. But it's the week for teachers. In less than a week, that was last week, this is this week, we've just arrested Ramir Jones. He's 21 years of age. And he is a teacher at a private academy called Preparing the Way Academy. It's a private school. It's not associated with the school district. He teaches grades five through eight. And here's what occurred. He met this young lady who was 15 years old and she was on probation for felony battery and grand theft. Well, on December the 4th, she cut her monitor off and ran away. So our detectives, once again, who are the very best, start looking for this 14-year-old. We learned during this investigation that she's hanging with a school teacher, or at least is an associate or a friend of the school teacher. So our t now we're to the 5th of December, and we're frantically looking for this 15-year-old girl who we believe may be in the company of a, not only an adult, but a school teacher. So after a lot of investigative work, at about 11.30 at night on December the 5th, our detectives go to Mossy Oak Lane, which is Ramir Jones' address, and we say, hey, we're looking for this young lady. She's 15, she's a runaway, she's endangered. Now understand, at this moment in time, we've not attached him, you know, we just, it was a hunch. So it all came together after this. But we're putting bits and pieces of what this girl says and this girl says and this girl says. So he says, hey, come on in and look around. The detective searched the house. He's not there. She's not there. She's not in the house. So they leave. So they search all night long and they're gathering more information and more information and that's when they figure out that she has possibly gone to a RJ's house. And they go, oh, that's the guy that we went to earlier. That's the school teacher. That's the guy. So they go back at 6.15 in the morning. Well, the detectives are tired. They look him in the eye and go, okay, dude, we're well over this. We've got a 15-year-old missing girl we have information that you went someplace and picked her up earlier in the evening, last evening. Where is she? He let us in the house again. And we found her in his bed. Did you hear what I said? I didn't stutter. In his bed. At this point in the investigation, there's no credible evidence that they engaged in sex. But as the investigation went on, we found out why we were searching in the house earlier as just a fluke, just running through the numbers of possible people that knew her, that he was hiding her in his car. And he told her, turn off your cell phone so they can't find you. So we have charged him with a litany of charges. And we have text that he was grooming her for sex, even though there's no evidence there was sex at this time. We charged him with interfering with child custody, false information to law enforcement during the investigation, tampering, traveling to meet a minor, trespassing, everything we could think of. We also arrested the 15-year-old for violation of probation and cutting her monitor off, which is a criminal violation. 
Ramir Jones, a teacher, not the 15-year-old's teacher, but a teacher, is currently in the county jail, and he was just given this afternoon a $51,000 bond. Ladies and gentlemen, listen to me clearly. These folks are put in a position of authority over students, over children, over kids. They are to be the show the appropriate leadership for these children. Both of these fail the community, fail their schools, fail the parents whose children they were entrusted to, and they're going to be held accountable. But here's a message I want to send out to everyone. The overwhelming majority of the school teachers across this county, this state, and this nation are absolutely awesome, totally awesome people doing a great job. These few like this will always be held accountable. Not only will they be criminally investigated and taken to court, but we're do, we will always do a press release and put them on blast. You cannot inappropriately hide children or have sex with children anyway. But when you're in a position of authority over them, it makes it much, much worse. That's the two events for the day that are significant. The back to the gang event, we still have a lot of gang bangers to put in jail and ultimately in prison. So here's a message for you gang bangers. If you don't want to go to jail and prison, knock it off. Stop it. You keep running and gunning in the streets with your buddies and you're going to be locked up too because we would rather see you all locked up in jail and prison and alive than dead in the streets and if you stay after each other long enough you'll all be shot down in the street we've already had two deaths that we know of as a result of this particular event and it's not acceptable anything else Going once, going twice. Thank you all very much for being here. See you later.